today, we're gonna to talk about working with sync sound in Adobe Premiere Pro. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, this is Rich Harrington for DSLR Video Skills, brought to you by Adorama. And today, we're gonna to talk about working with sync sound in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, Premiere Pro is a popular nonlinear video editing tool that a lot of folks are using, and it's very well suited for a DSLR workflow. Reason why? DSLR video files work natively. No transcoding, no rewrapping, no extra compression, just dump them in and go. And the advantage here is that you could start to edit a lot faster. So, let's take a look at this. We've got some sync sound material. That's where we record the video and the audio separately. Now, we've done two past episodes about this, one about the gear, one about the field workflow. So be sure to check out the link on the screen or below the video, and you'll actually can check out those two tutorials and learn about the production process. What I'm here to talk about today is post-production, where you put the pieces together for the final edit. All right, let's jump into Premiere. I've already imported the two pieces. In this case, we have an audio file and a video file. Let's just load that up, and as I drag through here, you see we have our interview and we're looking for the slate. There it is. A slate is often used as a sync point. In this case, we're using an iPad application called DSLR Slate and we're simply providing information that can be used during the editing process as well as a common reference point for the sync sound and the camera audio. All right, let's step through here. You'll notice there as it flashes past, it gives you lots of information about the crew, the project, etc. And there is the white flash. And you can also hear the audio there. So I'm going to place a marker by pressing the letter M for marker. And you can actually click that button as well for add marker. Okay, we'll go ahead and load up the reference audio file, and I'm doing the same sort of thing, looking for that beep. Sync source for both the DSLR camera and the separate recorded audio. Okay, I see the little spike here. There it is. And I could press M or click the marker button to add another marker. Now, once you have two markers, you can synchronize the clips, and it's pretty easy it's going to use that marker on both clips to create a point of reference. So I've got my video file with the bad camera audio. Remember, DSLR cameras just have little pinprick microphones. Those shotgun mics sound pretty hollow. And then I've got the better recorded audio that's a separate file. I'm going to throw away the audio over here and bring this one underneath and let them get connected as a new clip. Okay, I'll select both clips. Click on one, control click on the other. And I'm just going to choose Clip, Merge Clips. In doing this, it gives me the opportunity to rename the file. And that's actually not a bad option. The camera generated names aren't terribly useful. There we go. And I'm going to tell it to use the marker that I added. Now, if you have multiple markers, you could pick them from the list. I'm going to remove the audio from the video clip and just use the audio from the other file. If I was using a very advanced audio recorder, it might have the option of actually having time code. I can now click OK, and you'll see that a new clip was made in the bin. Now in this particular case, the clip itself starts in black. That's all right. As I drag in there, you see the video kicks in, and that's because the audio recorder was running longer than the video file. Let's jump a little farther in and we'll take a listen to an interview answer. We're not able to go into the bush to research them. They uh, weren't really able to do much research until about the 1970s. So as you hear there, very, very clean audio. And that's because we used the dedicated external audio recorder with a professional lavalier microphone that was nice and close to the subject's mouth. We can also run on a second channel a boom microphone to have a secondary audio source. And this is a professional sync sound workflow. Now, some of you are looking at that and saying, that's a pain. Yeah, you have to do this for hundreds of clips. It can get kind of annoying and time consuming. 
Fortunately, there's some dedicated software to speed this up. So this merge clip workflow, perfectly fine. Easy to do, not that hard, straightforward, just takes time. You're looking to save time, there's a great product called Pluralize that lets you do this right in the nonlinear editing application. Let me show you how it works. All right, I've got four video clips and one long audio file from recording the interview. And I don't want to have to sync these up one at a time or by hand. To make things easier, I can go ahead and spit out a XML file. So I'll choose File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML. And we'll just save that out, in this case to the desktop, it's a temporary file. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, and it's a common language used by many video editing applications to exchange data. It allows different tools to communicate, like Final Cut Pro to Premiere Pro, or Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. And it's just essentially information about the clips that allows you to exchange. All right, now that we have exported that, I'm just going to go out to the desktop here for a second. And I have a shortcut for Pluralize. This allows me to go ahead and open up that XML file. If I have more than one sequence, it'll come in. And in this case, I'm going to choose it from the sync sound bin called multiple, because that's the sequence I was using. And what I want to do is align things. Now, if I know that I've put all the clips in chronologically, I could choose that. It'll speed things up. If I have markers, etc., that's fine. I'm going to choose the replace audio option to get rid of the existing audio. I'm going to also normalize my volume out by telling it to level the audio. And try real hard is a fancy way of saying make sure you're accurate. And I've got a fast computer, so I'll choose that. All right, it looks like it's all set there. I can click sync, and it's going to analyze the files. While it's analyzing, since I told it to normalize the volume or adjust the level, it's going to make sure that the volume is consistent. And it's going to lift those levels up and make sure that my audio doesn't fluctuate throughout the interview. Now, typically this isn't a problem if you have a dedicated audio engineer. They'd be writing those levels manually during the interview. But a lot of times in a DSLR workflow, you're kind of running and gunning. Your audio person might be you, the camera person. Or maybe they're doing double duty and trying to hold a reflector at the same time. By making this a little more flexible, you could take care of some of those problems during the post-production stage. Okay, the file is saved. I could switch back to my project. And all I'm going to do is basically import that XML file again. There it is. It's been modified. I'll click Open, and it brings it in as a bin. If I open that up, you'll see inside there's the media. Here is a new synced project as well as a replaced audio project. And let's just open both of those up for a second. Here's the synced option. And you see that it lined up the clips appropriately. Let's jump into the middle of an interview. Bonobos. They've gone unrecognized. So in this case, we're hearing both audio channels. However, it's turned off audio one and two. If I turn those on, you'll hear the camera mic and the sync sound. It's going to sound a little bit like an echo. For many, many years. Let's just listen to the camera only audio, and you'll hear how atrocious it is. Um, this is because many scientists and researchers were. Hear how hollow that is? Here's the simple solution. It sucks. Don't use it. Let's turn it off. We're not able to go into the bush. There's the dedicated mic. Them. They, uh... Much, much cleaner. And if we look at this replaced option, you'll notice that it's been really cool and that it's taken the old audio, got rid of it, and lined things up. So if I want to move this byte later in my show, I could just grab it and pull it down. You'll notice as you drag that they're automatically linked together. So you essentially have new clips that are ready to use, and each question or every time you hit start stop on the camera, it lined it up. The real cool thing here is you didn't have to do a lot of extra work and simply keep start stopping that audio recorder. A lot of DSLR video cameras have a time limit of how long they can record video. But this workaround allows you to just let the audio track run continuously, drop in the video files, click analyze, and it's going to go ahead and do the hard work for you. 
I'm telling you, this is one of the best pieces of software I own, and it saves a huge amount of time. Now, if you are not using a nonlinear editing tool, the folks over at Singular Software have another product called Dualize. And what this allows you to do is have one folder on your computer with the video files and another with the audio. And then it merges those together and writes to a new folder, a new file that has the original video with the new audio. So if you're a shooter who needs to hand off their footage to somebody else and you don't know what editing tool they're going to use, that's a great product as well. All right. That is the sync sound workflow inside of Adobe Premiere. I showed you the built-in method, which works really well, and I showed you the high volume method if you've got a lot of clips to go through, and that's using Pluralize from Singular Software. My name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for checking out this episode of DSLR Video Skills. Be sure to head on over to the Adorama Learning Center where there's a bunch of articles about sync sound workflow, both the gear and the post-production techniques. Thanks a lot for joining me. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.